to the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 31, and we're going to read verses 3 through 6, and then 8 through 11. 3 through 6, and 8 through 11, Jeremiah 31. And so when you get it, you give me them thumbs up emoji on the phone. You yell, still save. I know we'll be able to hear you. Uh, Jeremiah 31 and beginning verse with uh, verse three, going three through six and then eight through 11. All right. All right. If you're in the New Testament looking for Jeremiah, you are in the wrong place. Amen. All right. All right. So I'm going to read and then you can follow along. Verse three says, the Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. I will build you up again. And you, Virgin Israel, will be rebuilt. Again, you will take up your timbrels and go out to dance with the joyful. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim. Come, let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God. Let's go down to verse eight. See, I will bring them from the land of the north Gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor. A great throng will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble because I am Israel's father. And Ephraim, is my firstborn son. Son, hear the word of the Lord, you nations. Proclaim it in distant coastlands. He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. For the Lord will deliver Jacob and redeem them from the hand of those stronger than they. Amen. Lord, add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his most holy word. And so our sermonic theme is encouragement, the magnetic attraction. Encouragement, the magnetic attraction. I have, uh, if they have anything that uh, uh, have uh, caught my attention, uh, especially uh, uh, within this earth, my uh, week, took a uh, astronomy, astronomy merit badge uh, with my son a couple of years ago, which caused us to be able to see the stars. We were also able to see the space station uh, at night. And as we uh, watched it, we saw it twice. Once as it circled, uh, within the hour, we were able to see it circle back. Just to show you, show you the speed by which it can move around uh, this earth in this big earth. And, and it, it's, it's clear uh, uh, what space exploration has, uh, uh, does not have that we have on earth. We have what's called gravity, right? That gravity is what keeps us moving in that sustainable force, right? It, it's that magnet, right? That ensures that we don't float away, but we remain secure as we sleep or as we walk. Now, now it's, it's clear here that it, it, it creates the understanding that uh, uh, our survival is, is determined, right? It is enhanced by this magnetic pool um, that, that, that goes beyond uh, our own scientific understanding. It, it, it is something. Uh, um, that is unexplainable, but it's something that we know that is there. And that if you leave the earth, it is no longer there. Now, it's something here because the compass is an instrument that 
um, uses the Earth's magnetic pull to determine direction and coordinates. If you study the old seafaring uh, crews of the 14th and the 15th century, they use the magnetic pull of the Earth to determine its direction to trade. Right. It, even now, that magnetic uh, uh, pull is still determined in, in, in training. Like as, as much as our radar and as much as all these fancy electronic systems, uh, there is still a basic thing that if all of it were wiped away, uh, you still would be able to focus on this magnetic pull. So our creation of modern day magnets that we see uh, it's this gravitational pull, this magnetic attraction. And, and, and that's how we get the term. It's like a magnet finds these metals, these properties of irons, and immediately uh, it is drawn to them and it connects with them. And it connects with them to the point that to break them apart, church, we have to use a lot of force when we're pulling it apart because that attraction is so serious uh, that it wants to stay, right? No, no matter how much you break it, it still is drawn to it. It can't, it can't leave, right? Because the properties in both of them uh, are forever aligned, right? In their path, they cannot get away from one another. That's our thing of the magnetic attraction. We have used it now in our in our relationship world. We have brought science to couples who are magnetically attracted. No matter how much they try to escape, they find a way to pick up the phone and call each other, right? No matter on what parts of the earth, they find a way to telegraph, to send. It's always a way that they're brought back to each other, right? That 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 even when broken apart, they still find ways to be able to come back together. It's that magnetic attraction. And, and it's essential to our understanding biblically uh, in, in, in the evolution of our, of our humanity, especially um, as, we, as when the first sin occurred and how there was that break between God and Adam and Eve. And, and Adam and Eve. God creates us out of his own image. And, and therefore, the comforting thing is that no matter how messed up we get, God just can't seem to leave us alone, right? No matter what we have done, right? God finds a way to still connect with us, right? In our worst, in our worst moment, right? In our worst of worst moment, in our most fantastic array of sin, there still is forgiveness that drives us back to God and that God is driven to us. So, so he will not leave us nor forsake us is real talk because as we are created in God's image, the comforting thing is that no matter what we're facing, there is still something there, right? That drives us back to our knees to pray, that, that drives us into his bosom. But the great thing is the arms are open to receive us. Right, right. I mean, that's the thing. And, and, and so there is a magnetic pull between God and God's creation. Let's go to verse three here and, and let's be able to explore this uh, 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 more deeply. Verse three says, long ago, the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you, my people, with a what? Everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Right now, now. Again, now, as you're looking at Jeremiah is preaching to a people that have been banished from their own land and, and they are under the rule of secular, of earthly secular powers. And these prophets have been sent to these people to one, remind them of the evil that they did that got, him, that got them there in the first place, but more so to let them know that God have not abandoned you. There's that magnetic pull. It's, it's love, right? We are created out of God's own image. So just as a parent cannot deny their children, neither can God deny uh, its own creation. 
come on, we see this biblically. Like, you know, we mentioned before, Adam and Eve were terrible, right? But God still provided for them, okay? Abraham and Sarah uh, were extremely sinful. They were impatient. God still gave them an heir, right? The Hebrew children were enslaved and crying out. God still provided them a Moses. Moses messed up. He still uh, rose him or elevated him to leadership. David, oh gosh, how bad did David mess up? for God to still love him and keep him in power and bless him along the way. And even here, church, when the Israelites and the Judites were rushed into exile, God could send an Isaiah, a Jeremiah, an Ezekiel, a Nehemiah, and ultimately send to us his own son. He, God did not hold back his best. There was still that connection with, the, with, with God's own children that God says, I will, no matter how bad they have been, I will, I will finish the work that I've started. I'm going to still give you my child, right? It's the magnet. It's the properties are intertwined. There is a pool. Even though we mess up, God still finds a way to clean us up and accept us back. We have had to rely on our get back to God card so many times. And, and the thing is, though, is some, you know, you know how, I, you know, it used to be that, that uh, I talked last week about taking the bus with my father, I believe, right? And that, you know, on the transfer, you know, they would punch a hole in the transfer, right? And, and if you got a couple holes punched in there, you couldn't use it no more. I mean, thank God, God's grace is not like that, right? Because uh, on our transfer, it's so many holes punched in there, you can't see where the first hole was punched, right? Because God keeps letting us back on the bus, even though it seems like we have run out of opportunities, right? And we get on the bus and we still mess it up with our gossiping, with our backstabbing, right? What we're not going to do, right? Biblically, biblically, we're not going to give. We're not going to tie. We're not going to do the work. We're not going to do these things. God still opens that door, right, for us to get back on, right? And that's something, that's something that the liar is, right? God still receives us and in our, in our most deep and gracious sin, whether we are in prison, whether we are on the street, glory can still find us. And thank God we don't get punished for what we have done, right? That's what uh, uh, I've looked at the questions. I mean, y'all getting some of the answers to the questions for this thing, this, you know, this afternoon. Thank God, God doesn't hold the past against us that in my most messed up, torn up state, right? The Lord can still receive me and grant me grace and mercy, right? Come on, let's go, let's go to verse 10. Verse 10, here, I'm, I'm gonna read this. The Lord who scattered his people will gather them together again. Watch over them as a shepherd does his flock. For the Lord has redeemed Israel from those too strong for them. God is, 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 is indicating that, that God still has power over these earthly strongholds. He is here gathering the lost people and bringing them back together as a sign of unity. It is God establishing superiority by claiming authority over the enemies that have enslaved us and that hold us down. Again, we refer it to, he will make your enemies your what? Footstool, right, right? God has dominion over it. God has dominion over the grief that we are feeling. All right. Just within our church, I was on, I was on, I was, I was on with the church uh, clerk. We were counting the deaths for the year this year. We're like, wow, wow, right? God has dominion over the grief, right? God still has dominion over the future. Church, we ain't out the year yet. Right? Okay. In the midst of addiction, uh, 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 drugs and alcohol can take over the physical addiction, but God can physically reclaim the bloodstream 
and release us from that master. God can physically claim us from sickness or claim us from the depression that occurs in the midst of sickness. God can physically reclaim us from the heartbreak, the heartache, right? Those who have had power over our emotions and have completely damaged or destroyed us and sought to not let us rise above it, God can have dominion over. These rulers and these things of the air, God can claim. Because he can't break that attraction to us, nor can we break that attraction to In our worst moment, right? Lord, how did I get in? We can, uh, we, can, we can get back to praying. We may not have prayed for months. When something happened to us, let's get those hands together. Let's get on our knees. We can do it, right? Verse 13 here, let's finish this off. The young women will dance for joy and the men old and young will join in the celebration. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and exchange their sorrow for rejoicing. What does God do in bringing persons together? God remains the center. Right? Look at this celebration that's occurring in the recognition that God has to be the center. You fast forward to Jesus Christ, who declares that if I be lifted up, not you or me, but if I, I will draw all men unto me. It's indication here, church, you got to work with this, that the supreme presence of God on this earth is, 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 is belittling the earth and all of its beauty to indicate to us that it is small before God. That heartbreaker is but a speck right, on God's finger, right? That backstabber is but a speck in the speck of speck on God's finger. Right. Right. When Christ is around the table for my last supper, he says, my blood, he says, my body, my blood, because that's where the power is. When the focus is on God. Right. God, through his son, Jesus Christ. Survival is the ultimate result. Right. That's how we survive. That's the encouragement part. Right, right. We can sometimes wonder. We can sometimes wonder, Lord, how am I going to make it? Go to Jeremiah 31. Because it's not just you making it. It's that God hasn't forgotten you to be able to give you the strength to make it. What you think you cannot get through, as the Israelites, as the Judites thought that they could not get through, the prophet is here to tell you that you are going to rejoice as I conquer your enemies. Stick with me. Right? Same can be here with the church, right? You are going to rejoice as we come back together. You will be better. You will be bigger. You will be wiser. Because the present circumstances cannot define the future. Right? 20, uh, 2020 could shake us, 2021, Lord have mercy, 2022 then left some huge bruises up in this thing. Some of us don't even want to play the videos of the choir because we see the persons that are in the choir who are no longer with us. Okay? We never thought videos be be could become memorials, right? But they also can become sources of joy because look what God has brought us from. And then ask yourself, why are you still here? What purpose there is for you? Right? Life may shake us, right? But there's that magnetic force. Again, when I'm talking about that magnet that comes up against, we can pull it away, but it's still going to come back, right? Pull it away, right? Sometimes, I mean, you can get a magnet to move and you don't even have to touch it, right? The magnet can sense the properties of the metal that it needs to connect to because what is in that magnet is the same thing that's in that metallic properties and it's drawn to it. It'll move without us touching, right? 
this people may have been overcome by Babylonia, by Persia, by Greek, by Rome, whomever it was, God still in the midst put his son on the line. They may have cursed God. They may have been a, a completely against the will that he had assigned them. God still sent his son. His son, even though he was, uh, 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 he was talked about, even though he was spit upon, even though he was beat upon, right? Didn't abandon, didn't abandon the cause. So we can, okay? As much as you go away from God, there's still something in you that brings you back. And you may play the role like it doesn't matter to you, okay? You'll try to find other people to talk about church who, you know, uh, and they don't go to church neither. But you'll find somebody in there to say, well, I started going back to church. Now you don't even want to talk to me. Right? You'll call in on the wrong Zoom and you'll find out you're here for the People's Institutional Baptist Church service. You watch. Right? You would do everything, everything you can not to give, right? And you find yourself reaching in. Nobody else will see you but the account, but you'll do it because the Lord's speaking to you. You'll find every reason not to serve, but then you'll find a roundabout way to help. Because right? this is the Lord won't leave this people alone. Certainly he won't leave us alone. Amen. Amen. Let's praise God for his word. And we are grateful for uh, God's word and God's commitment to us as a people. This is your.